All right, g'day guys. Um, I'm here with Alfredo. Hi. Um, thanks for yeah. Thanks for a really enjoyable test drive this My morning. Pleasure. Yeah, that was great. It's so, always fun. Yeah, to drive the boat. Absolutely. So yeah, we're here in Cannes. Um, we're on the the Majesty 120. Uh, it's actually like 123 feet, something like that. Um, but we've yeah we've just had an experience of driving the boat out on on the bay here. It's a pretty quick boat. <laughs> I was I was surprised about that. But what we might do. I'm not the expert. You know a lot more than, than I, Alfredo. So I thought um, for this video, we're just going to go through the systems, the operation, the tenders, the garage, and, and the engine bay, and, and we'll just have a chat um, and just bring you guys along with us. Um, the, we are going to film a, a walkthrough of this boat as well. That's going to be separate. So uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description uh, of the video or, or pop a, a little banner up on the screen, one or both. My name's Dan Jones, this is Dan's Boat Life, so subscribe if you enjoy this content. Um, so Alfredo, um, we might just talk about the, the engines, the cruising speed, and you know, we, it felt like I was flying the drone, but it felt like we were doing 20 plus knots. We were actually doing 21.5. Okay. Which is, was our top speed today, but it's not our top, top speed. Right. We so reached up to 22.9. 22, so what, what revs approximately would the engines That's, be doing? That's uh, 2,450. Okay, wide open throttle. So what's, take we, we must be burning some some juice at that speed. Yeah, around 1,000 liters. Okay, right. Well, at least Combined. You can get places. Is, so so what motors are we running on, on this boat? We're running two MTU, um, 2,400 yep. horsepower each. Each, wow, okay. Yeah. And that's on a straight shaft? Yeah. Straight correct. shafts, okay. And um, would, have you seen the, the propellers on this boat? They have six wings. Yep, okay. Six um, bales. Yep. And they're pretty big, actually. Yep. They're, uh, they have a diameter of 2.8 meters. Oh, sorry, um, 1.8 meters. Okay. Yeah. Look, it felt like it when we were parking, because I noticed it, you just got the bow thruster, and when you were going in and out of gear, we could feel the, the torque. The kick, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. okay, interesting. Um, so, um, from from a, obviously the top speed, what would be the fast cruise speed if, if an owner wanted to just move fast but more fuel efficiently on this boat? I believe that what we've tested showed us that if we sail around 16 to 18 knots, yep. the fuel consumption is pretty fair because yep. we are around 500, 550 liters combined, yeah, okay. which is a very good fuel consumption. To Big sail difference at 16, for a, 16, 17 knots. A boat this size. Yeah, absolutely. And off the plane, um, what is your slow speed long range? We also sailed quite a few miles at 10, 11 knots. Yep. Which makes the boat like look like, uh, you know, the old classy boats yeah. consuming literally nothing. Yeah. Like okay. Around 100 liters per hour. Wow. So we're talking about the engines. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Not the gen set. So, um, what What's the fuel tank capacity on this boat? We have a total capacity of 20, roughly 22,000 litres. Okay, so that's a healthy range yeah. at um, 8 to 10 knots. It, it, roughly, would you know what that, that is off the top of your head? 2,700 okay. miles, okay. roughly. Yeah, pretty good. It's an Atlantic crossing. Yeah, exactly. It's a good one. And so, um, how many generators? Are we we have two generators, yep. two colours, yep. 80 kilowatts each. Yep. And they are totally sufficient to supply the whole boat okay. for all the power it needs. And, and um, that bath thruster, is that an electric or a hydraulic? Everything is electric on board. Okay. But the pistons of the garage door. Yep. So bow thruster is electric. Yep. Rudders, of course. Yep. The stabilizers are electric. They're pretty cool, actually. They have yeah. magnetic motors. Ah. Yeah, they're amazing. Okay, interesting. So can you explain that to the audience? It's like... Um, the coupling between the fin and the motor um, includes no no through hull fitting, no shaft, no nothing. It's oh. just a coupling like that, right. and the power keeps the things together. So it's the, it's it's the magnetic. The magnetic transfers yeah. through the, the hull. The same magnet you would put, you would put on the fridge. Right. It's the same kind of coupling. Okay, and then less holes in the boat. I like less holes in boats. Exactly. <laughs> That's good. No, I don't like holes in boats. That's really interesting. And they are very powerful. Yeah. They move pretty fast. Okay. Considering the kind of system they are. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, okay. Um, that's, that's fascinating. What about the, um, the whole profile below the waterline? I was looking at it from the drone, and I'll, I'll be cutting to some of this footage for the audience to view. Um, you know, she's got a nice fine entry. We were yeah. slicing through the waves. She's pretty slim. Yep. And she, 
Yeah, we can say shallow. Yeah. The draft is just 2.2 meters. 2.2 meters. Which is very good to yeah. get in ports like this one. Now we're, uh, yep. we have 2.9 meters below, below the keel. Below the waterline. Like, right, yeah. okay. And we oh. can still get in. Yeah, yeah, we were kicking up some mud, so I noticed that. Um, and is it uh, below, you know, once we come down from the fine entry, what does the, the, the whole profile look like under the water? Let's say that after a few meters, the hull starts to be uh, quite flat, yep. which gives us the chance to reach those speeds, yep. consuming yep. that amount of fuel. I understand. Yep. yep, interesting. Okay, fascinating. Yep. Um, now, when you were leaving the dock today, we were obviously observing what was going on. You had crew positioned around the boat. You were all on radios. Um, uh, I didn't notice whether you used the wing station or not. Can you... I did. Okay. Uh, just for a, just for a moment on the way out. Yep. I use them more when I when I dock the boat. Okay. Because especially when I dock the boat next to some other boats, because yep. I have a good visual. Yep. And then I have my first officer. Yep. on the stern so so your options to control it's wing station wing station and helm is that everything yeah i also have another another station on the stern okay which i i do not normally use yep but it's very useful let's say when i when you do rock stern to rocks oh uh, yes mooring, to get like in greece or turkey yep yep that's very usual yeah and that station is very very useful for that and um, how many crew would you say you need to, to get the boat out of a dock like this? We normally do the maneuver with three to four crews. Yep. I drive the boat. Yep. I have someone at the anchor yep. or anchors. And I have one or two persons on the stern getting the lines back. Okay. Okay. It's pretty easy. Yep. What about cameras? Do you um, have access or do you need cameras or are you okay? I, we of course, use the radios. We're constantly in, con in um, contact with yep. each other. But I also have a camera system yep. that shows me all around the boat. Yep. I have cameras in the gunnels. I have camera on the top of the mast yep. and one on the stern. Okay. That shows me the distance and well, well, gives me... Well, we might as well, if you don't mind, can we just run through um, the systems here on uh, at the helm and we'll just take the audience through. Yeah, of course. We'll just start from the starboard and make our way across to port. Sure. Here we have all the, let's say, safety communication systems. This is a Navtex where I receive um, weather, weather conditions messages. This is AIS, where I transmit my sailing condition if I'm at anchor, on the way, or any other, like not under command, yep. anything. My yep. speed, my course. This is just a, a small uh, wind station. Yep. This screen, I normally use it for the cameras. Now okay. it's switched off, but normally yep. you could see all the cameras there. Yep. Chart plotter, depth, when I dock or radar when I'm on the way. And this is our um, PLC. This manages the whole boat. Mm -hmm. On the home screen, you have the, all the different sections. You can see tanks, you can use, uh, you can activate pumps or, bilge, or um, bilge pumps, fire pumps, navigation lights. You can check the engines. Question, is this a golf craft um, software or is this a different management like What's, what's That's behind? a company that works with Golfcraft okay. and tailors yep. the system on the boat. Okay, I understand. That works okay. very good. Okay. And then it looks like we've got another we've bi got data another just here. Small MTU. MTU. So that's port and you've got the starboard over the other exactly. side. Exactly. Yep. And that last one, it's a particular system that's called BNWAS. Okay. That is for uh, night watches. Yep. So um, it's like. Um, like an alarm yep. to keep you awake. Okay. Because after a few years of accidents at sea, because uh, of tiredness or pe of people getting asleep, yep. they started to use this kind of that kind of system. Interesting. It's like a, a present system. You have to hit the button yep. every three or six minutes. Otherwise, right. an alarm starts, and if you don't hit the button, the whole boat will sound. Oh wow! Okay. So someone will. Someone will wake will up. Will be awake now. Okay. Well, that's that's good to know. Yeah. Obviously, got more communications. Communication. Boat systems. Yeah. These are the rudder pumps. Yep. One alternated, one DC. Okay. And then we have the stabilizers, uh, stabilizers which allows us to have zero speed as well. Yep. Engine controls, mm -hmm. wing stations, or uh, wheelhouse. This is to send command to the other stations. Yep. Yep. Um, RPFs. Revs. Revs. Yep. Old ones. 
uh, remote commands for the for the plotters. Yep, and your rudder angle indicator. Exactly. Yep. Other engine controls for the other side. Mm -hmm. Bow thruster, rudder, levers for the for the engines, of course. For a simple day boat man like myself, w why do you have a control for the rudder like this? Can you explain that to me? Because of course you have to control the rudder manually. You can only you cannot always run on the autopilot. Uh, when you maneuver, when you want to do sharp turns, when yep. you are uh, between other boats, yep. you want to manually steer the boat. So you don't use the, the wheel? The wheel, it's called a follow-up, right. which means when you move it, the, the rudder follows you, mm -hmm. and as you move it, it continues to follow you. This one is a non-follow-up, which means if I move it, when I release it, it stays the position you reach. Ah. With this one, if you go back to zero, the rudder comes back to zero again. So if you're parking the boat and you want to just kick the stern to the left or right, you could use this, give it a little bit of throttle. Exactly. I understand. And you can use the action of the propellers on the rudder as well. Yeah, to okay. To more effect. Okay, okay, I understand. I see we've got the FLIR, so that's going to be your night vision. We've got the autopilot, we've got the FLIR with the night vision, as okay. I said. We've got another VHF, yep. camera control. Yep. Sat phone because yep. we like to be in, in, in touch. Yeah, and I noticed the boat's got Wi-Fi as you'd expect as well. And okay. we have the Starlink. We're testing the new Starlink system. Oh, the Elon Musk one. Yes. Oh, that's cool. That's amazing. That's going to change that our world. Great. So it does. Are you using it all around the med? No, we just or, got it. We're okay. still testing it. But uh, okay. So, so for those of you who don't know, Elon Musk's new Starlink company, which is the uh, the mobile internet is what we're talking about. Um, so it's, it's working well. Very well. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so let's go and have a look, quick look at the wing station, sure. and then, then if we can have a look at your forward tender crane. So that's pretty simple. Okay, so that just pulls up. You just and, pull up. And to acti it. activate the station, how complicated is that? It's very easy. From the panel I yep. showed you inside, you hit the bottom, yep. then you come out here yep. and take command. Done. Okay. And you can start to maneuver from here. And you have full control of the boat with these. Full control. The yep. same controls you have inside, you have it outside. Yep. Rudder, bow thruster, levers for the engine. Yep. Rudder angle. Mm -hmm. You can even stop the engines in case of emergency from out here. I understand, and that's so you don't accidentally stop it. Exactly. So I understand. Okay. Uh, let's go forward and just have a look at your forward tender crane. Um, so. This is clearly just for the jet skis. Is, is there any, would you use this crane for anything else? Sometimes we use it to lift heavy weights in the Bosons locker. Oh, but okay. Normally, yeah, it's designed for the jet ski. Okay, all right. Um, two anchors. It's very, very useful. Got it. So that, that's a huge Bosons locker. It's exactly. massive. And then I saw you guys operating this this morning because we have already raised and lowered the anchor this yeah, morning. We normally raise it to, to get ourselves some more space. Yep, yep, okay. And then we can operate the anchors. Cool. Okay, and these uh, jet skis fit nicely here. All right, let's um let's head down to the equipment space sure. and um, just give us a quick look. What's the best way? Is it down the starboard side? Yeah. Okay, we'll follow, follow you. So, to the crew, when the crew are transiting. Um, you know, do they normally use one side versus the other to stay away from the guests, or what's, the, what's the... The goal is to be invisible. Yeah. So the crew... So, so how do you do that on this boat? It's not always easy, but yep. we we tend to know where the where our guests are. Yep. So we know if to use yep. the starboard or port gunnel. Yep. Normally to go up to the bridge, we use the starboard, uh, yeah, the starboard. Straight up. Straight up to the bridge. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And to and go through the inside. On that theme, before we go to the equipment space, let's quickly have a look at the galley. Sure. So if you to be invisible, you could go on that side, to be but invisible, you're invisible. We don't. We don't not normally cross the cockpit okay but in, at this moment we don't have any guests okay so we can. okay so and if you were going to the galley is that is this you would go straight there yep. yes okay got it all righty and then once you get in hello g'day how you going you have straight access to the galley we're without having, having to galley. go through the main saloon okay so this is the galley space oh nice air conditioning in here this is great <laughs> So we have a sliding door, so that's basically your serving door, exactly. essentially, and then the crew can work in here. Actually, Marley, you can show the guests and just, just do a quick pan around so they can see the working space. This is like a, looks like a full commercial galley. It is basically. a very comfortable galley. 
What about extra refrigeration? Do you have more refrigeration downstairs? Or? We actually have two fridges, two uh, freezers. Okay. And we got an extra fridge there. Okay. So, so just have a quick look here, Marley, just so that's, that's the dishwasher to, going. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is a huge fridge. We have two fridges here. Just one, there. And two. And another one in there. And then we have two full-size freezers. Wow. Awesome. Which allow us to have quite a storage. So how many um, how many days away with your average guest size do you reckon you can keep enough stores on the Considering boat? Considering that we can receive up to 14 guests oh. with the number of beds we have, we normally can stay uh, three, four days away yep. without supplying. Yeah, okay. Because we have 14 guests, plus you have to count eight or nine crews. Correct. And then obviously depending on the numbers that can that can change of course okay so if we want to leave the galley if, in, from a cruise perspective and go down to the engine space we go out this door we Is go that, yeah so, this oh, you, you you lead the way okay follow me and then we have to go through the crew mess because the engine access yep it's via the crew mess okay how many crew bunks do you have we have uh, three double cabins here. Three double cabins, One, right. you can see it on your left. We won't go into their cabins because everyone's... the other two here. People are, you know, obviously on board and living here, but let's go straight into... Let's go in the engine room. Into the engine bay. The second heart of the boat. Okay, so two doors, double doors. Yeah, of course, for safety. Yep. Oh yeah, this is a beautiful engine bay. As you can hear, the generator is running. Yep, absolutely. So. Um, take us through the systems here. Is that, is that fire pump distribution is, or what, what are we, what's going on We can there? use the engineer for that. Yeah, for sure. You can definitely be more... Uh... All right, we'll just, we'll just do a ba basic look around. Essentially, with straight shafts. We have a section where we can select uh, the different actions of the pumps we use. Yep. If they, are, uh, if they have to, uh, to be fire pumps or yep. bilge pumps or transfer pumps. Yep. Anything. Okay. Then we can find the... Uh, Aircon compressors. Aircon compressors. We have five of them. Yep. And then this is the main engine, of course, with yep. the exhaust. Yep. Beautiful the stainless exhaust. Aircon in the engine room. Air conditioning in the engine room. Yeah. Can like, you feel the fresh? Yeah, it does. Feels good. <laughs> I mean, so that makes a lot of sense for a, a company that builds boats in Dubai. Yeah. So <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. So is one a day gen set and one a night, or are they both the same capacity? You just swap just them, alternate. try to even the hours. Okay. Just alternate them. All right. Keep them. Power distribution and... Controls of the engines, yep. battery chargers, everything. Yep. This is an escape hatch. So that's Street. not how you would regularly get to the tender garage. This one uh, takes you into the garage. Yes. Okay. And it can, it can work as an escape hatch, or you have the real escape hatch, which brings you under the cockpit table. Yep, so okay. Outside, straight I, outside. I understand. Um, can we go and have a look at the tender garage? Yeah, sure. All righty, okay. so we'll go back up this way. So try and stay close to us so we don't lose the microphone, Marley, just through here. So everything was electric, you said, except for the tender garage door, is that right? Yeah. That's, that's hydraulic. Correct. Okay. So hydraulic has two pistons, yep. two big drums, which we're going to operate right now. So that's that escape hatch just there that we were uh, looking at before. And this is the fourth station I was telling you about. Okay, got it. So your visibility from here is pretty good. It's not you know, bad. It's, but that's, and you see what you need stern, to see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I understand. Okay. So we're going to operate the garage. And do you operate the passerelle from here as well? As well, yes. Yep. There are the buttons. Okay. And you can lift it, lower it, and extend it. Okay. So the garage door is coming up. How heavy must this thing be? It is heavy. Bloody heavy. It's massive. Yeah. But once it's open, I'll it stays show open. It. Yeah. <laughs> and what um, what style tender do you or size? Um, in the garage, we normally fit the jet skis, actually. Ah, jet okay. skis and all the water toys. We have a pool, we have a slider. Yep. We yep. have two big jet skis and two spark jet skis. Okay. So, so do you then have a chase boat? Exactly. Got it. We have a 12 meters chase Tw boat. Yeah, yeah, that's that's makes more sense. one of the crews that lives on it. Actually. And hopefully it's an Oryx, which uh, if you haven't seen the Oryx walk through, um, I'll leave a link to the 
in the description of the video because it's a very cool boat built by Golfcraft as well. Wow, this is a bit of a party. How cool is this? So th th is this door fully up right now? No, it's fully open. Okay, yep. And you have a shower over there. Oh, sick. That's a, okay, so we've got a rain head shower just yeah. up here built into the, um, um, into the door. So that's lovely. So if you were a guest trying to get out of the water, where do you deploy the, uh, the swim ladder? You normally have the swim ladder on the side here. Yep. So the guest can just step out of the water yep. and have a shower. Okay. And then we normally set uh, some beds here. Yep. So you can just stay in this area and enjoy awesome. the shadow okay. music. So this is, There's a bar there. This is a beach club. I was it imagining a more of a technical space when we <coughs> opened this door, but this is like, this is a proper beach club and that exactly. escape hatch, is that just behind there? Correct, I'll show you. Yeah. Yes, okay, so here. that's the other side from what we just saw in the engine bay. So now I understand why you would put jet skis in here because this is really designed for Once a luxurious tender. Once we deploy tender. everything, yep. this space becomes empty and yep. we set cool. okay. the table and everything in right. beds. Um, it becomes one of the most used space of the boat. I can tell because <laughs> you've got an epic amount of shade just here Correct. and with all the options that we have to enjoy throughout the boat, this possibly is the best space in the house. You imagine a pool, a jellyfish pool, yeah. continuing the rest of the boat yeah. with some beds on it. And your so, awesome tender that just admiring. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's what so I would be doing. This becomes an amazing place. Fantastic. Look, um, Alfredo, mate, thank you so much. I've learned a lot. Thank you for on board. Yeah, that, that was great. Um, we are going to film a, a walkthrough, guys. So if you're interested in a more detailed understanding of the, of the interior of this boat, um, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, yeah, my name's Dan Jones. It's been Dan's Boat Life. Thank you, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.